The chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan and the Taliban's victory there has left many questions about whether Americans are actually safer now. Until a few days ago, U.S. Ambassador Zalmay Khalilzad was the Biden administration's top envoy negotiating directly with the Taliban. He brokered the Trump era deal with the Taliban in which the U.S. promised to withdraw all U.S. forces. And he joins us now for his first television interview. Welcome to the program. It's great to be with you, Margaret. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, said this was a strategic failure, the end mm -hmm. of America's longest war. He said the enemy is now in charge in Kabul. Do you share that view? Well, I think uh, there is a lot of anger and a lot of resentment about what has happened uh, there. I think uh, with regard to terrorism, we largely have achieved our objective. Uh, on the issue of building a democratic Afghanistan, uh, uh, I think the, that uh, did not succeed. The struggle goes on. Uh, the, the Talibs are a reality of Afghanistan. Uh, we did not defeat them. In fact, they were making progress uh, yeah. on the battlefield, even as we were negotiating with them. And the reason we negotiated with them was because uh, the militarily things were not going as well as we would have liked. We were losing ground each year. They were winning uh, the war. Uh, uh, slowly but uh, uh, making progress and for us to reverse the progress that they were making uh, was going to require a lot more effort. How many Americans remain in Afghanistan today? Uh, we aren't sure. Uh, the, the, the frank answer is because not every American, uh, uh, some of them are Afghan Americans who, uh, who have families there, who, have, uh, who live there. Uh, it's hundreds, uh, isn't it? Uh, I, I think uh, it's very likely that it'll be uh, uh, in hundreds, but uh, we don't know. The truth of the matter is we don't know. The UN has given some pretty dire projections of what's happening inside Afghanistan right now. More than a million children could die of malnutrition in the next year. Yeah. The Taliban has still not allowed girls age 12 and older to return to school. They may say something, but they're not doing it. There are videos of women being beaten in the streets to just demonstrating for their rights. I mean, isn't this proof that the Taliban has no intention of becoming a democratic government or any kind of government that protects human rights. There's no question that uh, uh, the Taliban have a different vision for Afghanistan. It's a vision of a more Islamic government uh, uh, than existed before. And there is obviously disputes about the interpretation uh, of uh, Islam. Little girls going to school? Well, I think there is a disagreement uh, inside the Taliban. Right now, for example, in uh, at least three or four provinces, uh, uh, high schools uh, for uh, girls have been opened. And they say the same will happen uh, as far as the rest of the country is concerned. And uh, we should hold them uh, to that, keep pressure on them. If they don't, uh, Taliban don't move toward more inclusiveness, respecting the rights of the uh, Afghan people, the, and, and then honoring their commitment to us on terrorism, there will be no uh, move towards normalcy, and there shouldn't be. There should be no uh, release of funds uh, uh, so that economy uh, uh, could collapse. And in that collapse, uh, there, uh, uh, there, a new civil war mm -hmm. uh, uh, could start. Do they, they know where the leader of Al Qaeda is? The UN says he's living in Afghanistan. Well, um, the report that I have seen uh, uh, indicate he could be in Afghanistan or uh, adjacent territories. Uh, Ayman uh, al-Zawahiri. Uh, Al-Zawahiri. I don't know whether uh, the, the Taliban know it. Uh, uh, the, the Taliban that I dealt with, uh, uh, they told me they did not know where he was. You did not include the Afghan government in the deal between the U.S. and Taliban. That was a later step that you promised to, to include them. Oop. But for the deal you brokered, right. H.R. McMaster, right. retired general, former right. national security advisor to President Trump, said, said you, you brokered a surrender deal. How do you respond to that? How long did the General McMaster think we should continue while losing ground each year? Why, why, did, why was that the case after 20 years? That with so much investment, so much loss of life, that we were losing ground to the Talibs, and the alternative was either a negotiated settlement or more of the same. And uh, people way above my pay grade decided more of the same is not acceptable anymore. Because the American public had lost the will to fight. 
And, and the fight wasn't going right. Mm -hmm. The fight was not going right after 20 years. But on the specific point of one of the things in the deal, yes. why did the Trump administration agree to the Taliban's demand that 5,000 prisoners be released? Right. 5,000 prisoners right. who could very easily end up right on that battlefield. Right. Well, why did you do that before peace talks? Uh, the, uh, the Taliban, uh, in order to sit with the government, to negotiate wanted some confidence build, uh, building measures from both sides. Uh, their demand was all prisoners be released by both sides uh, as a goodwill gesture as they were going to sit together at the table to, uh, to negotiate peace. What uh, do they need potential fighters for if they're negotiating yeah. peace? Well, but they were giving up the fighters also because it was an exchange of prisoners, not a release, one-sided release. The Ghani uh, government uh, was began. not supportive of your work. I was representing the United States uh, to uh, carry out the president's uh, direction, but uh, I believe the biggest difficulty was that President Ghani and a, a few other Afghan leaders uh, did not believe that we were serious about withdrawal for a long time, and they liked the status quo compared to a pl uh, political settlement in which they might not have the jobs that they had. And, and the resources that the U.S. was providing would not be there. They mm -hmm. preferred the status quo to yeah. a, a political settlement. But if the United States is promising, essentially, to deliver the Afghan government and to make this deal happen, wasn't it diplomatic malpractice no. for the Secretary of State not to be holding Ghani's hand, walking him through this? Shouldn't Mike Pompeo have been doing that? Shouldn't well, Tony Blinken have been doing that? Both of them spent a lot of time uh, with uh, uh, President Ghani uh, to... Uh, take the negotiation seriously, to believe uh, that we were... How was more arm twisting not happening then? Uh, if, if all the blame is I, to go I, on the Ghani government. I, I believe myself, if, uh, now that you've asked, that uh, uh, rather than that we pressed the Ghani uh, too much, uh, it's my judgment that we didn't press him hard enough. Mm -hmm. and that we, so the Trump uh, administration could have pushed harder? We could have pushed harder, uh, I believe. We, in retrospect, my judgment is that uh, uh, we could have pressed President Ghani harder. Secretary Blinken has said he inherited, the President Biden inherited this deal right. and not a plan to execute it. Right. Whose well, job was that? Well, I think that uh, they did inherit uh, 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 the agreement, uh, no doubt. They had an opportunity to take a look at it and they did. They could have made a variety of decisions uh, uh, with regard to that agreement. Uh, they decided to stick with the withdrawal uh, provisions. Why of wasn't there a better plan in place from the Trump administration or crafted by the Biden administration to execute what you put on paper? Well, th this execution of the uh, last phase uh, was not uh, a military withdrawal that uh, went awry. It was uh, the uh, uh, response of the Afghan people to what was happening that created the scenes at the airport it was a combination of fear and opportunity. Fear because uh, for a long time, everybody was saying, including some officials, that uh, when the Talibs come into Kabul, there will be a terrible war, street to street right. fighting, destruction of the city. So people were afraid that was one. Two, the impression was created that the, anyone who can make it to the airport, whether you have documents or not, you will be evacuated to the United States and to, uh, to Europe. That combination, led to this flood of people to come to the airport and uh, caused the, uh, the, 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 the terrible scenes. Is there blame to be borne by President Biden and his diplomats who you were working with? Well, I believe that, uh, that uh, the diplomat worked very hard. The president made the decision that he did uh, not to go pursue a condition-based approach, but just a calendar-based approach right. because of a belief that if you pursue a condition-based approach, that the Afghan must negotiate and come to an agreement first that we will be stuck there for a long time. In your resignation letter, you said this did not turn out as you envisaged. Right. I, I would have wished, I would have liked to see a negotiated settlement. Why wasn't there a plan in place, at least on the counterterrorism front, oh, the, to the, deal with the Taliban, to talk to the Taliban? Well, we did talk to the Taliban. We have a set of agreements with them, uh, uh, some of which have not been released yet on what they will do on the terrorism front. We uh, hold them accountable to those agreements. The administration says that those agreements are not in place, which is why they're trying to build those relationships 
now with the Taliban? No, no, there is agreement in place. There is agreement in place uh, with the Taliban on, on uh, terrorism and counterterrorism. But to do what? Uh, well, that they, they will not host. They will not allow uh, fundraising. They will not allow training. Uh, they will not allow recruitment of by individuals or groups uh, that would threaten the security of the United States and our allies, uh, including Al Qaeda. But since we don't trust them, and since we decided to leave, we're going to do that from, uh, uh, the, so from are you beyond Afghanistan. And that remains a, a critical mission. Do you think Americans are safer now? The terrorist threat from Afghanistan is not what it used to be. The American people should be pleased, not with the way the uh, final phase happened. We all uh, are unhappy with that. But uh, that. Uh, uh, the Afghan war is over for the United States. Uh, the burden has been reduced uh, that we achieved the goal of uh, the devastating Al-Qaeda in the Afghanistan. The CIA says Al-Qaeda could reconstitute in as little as a year within Afghanistan. Well, our record of predicting things, unfortunately, we need to be a little humble uh, in this regard. Uh, but So uh, we're not safer. Uh, 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 You're hoping we are much safer than we were before we went to Afghanistan. We were, when Al-Qaeda, uh, Osama You're bin Laden was one. running camps right. and thousands of uh, people were being trained. Al-Qaeda sponsored Afghanistan. That is gone. But uh, from uh, August of this year on? Well, we need to keep an eye on the situation, do not, not to do the same thing we did uh, prior to 9-11, as we were seeing, Al-Qaeda was developing, training, organizing, and we uh, didn't have a serious strategy on response to it until after 9-11. We shouldn't repeat that mistake again. Do you feel you were misled by the Taliban? Well, I, I don't uh, 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 allow people to mislead me. I give, uh, do my homework. Uh, the whole of government, this was not a... a Zal Khalil Zad alone uh, no. doing this. I had uh, uh, the military, the intelligence, uh, everyone with me. You're the only one out here defending it, though. Yeah, but uh, I, that, that's one reason why I left. I give you credit for uh, coming yeah, and talking I, I'm, about I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I, one reason I left the government is that, uh, that uh, the debate wasn't really a, 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 as it should be based on realities and facts of what happened, what was going on. Uh, uh, and uh, what our alternatives were. The decision ultimately was uh, uh, made to put condition base aside and, yeah. uh, and follow a calendar. President Biden could have asked to keep troops longer, is what you're saying. He could have, then there would have been consequences for it, which is uh, that the Talibs might not have accepted that and therefore uh, they, uh, no attack on U.S. forces that was in place for so many months. Thirteen now. American yeah. service people died, though. As a result of a terrorist attack at the airport by uh, Daesh, which the Talibs are enemy Carried of. Carried out by ISIS. Uh, by so ISIS, and they are at war with each other. But that bomber was released from prison by the Taliban. It, well, not with the intention. When they to, came, not with the intention, but <laughs> well, that was what happened. So this wasn't an orderly withdrawal. Thirteen Americans. Nobody, died. nobody. Uh, I would. I'm not saying it was an ordered withdrawal. This was an ugly uh, fi final phase, no doubt about it. Could have been a lot worse. It could be a lot. The Talibs did help with the withdrawal. General McKenzie would tell you they did everything we asked them to do during that final phase. I was on the phone with them constantly. Push this. Uh, close this road, allow these uh, uh, buses. It could have been a lot worse. Kabul could have been destroyed. Street to street fighting could have occurred. I went to Afghanistan after 30 plus years after the Soviet withdrawal and what happened. Everywhere you looked, there was destruction, like uh, some German city after World War II. This could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. It can still be a lot worse, or it can get better. But the choice is now mostly theirs, Afghans. Rumi, the great Afghan born in Balkh, said, you can walk with people, you cannot walk for them. Ambassador, thank you for your time. Thank well, you for thank taking you. questions. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you.